Not many places in Jerusalem you can say I'm walking literally where Jesus walked. Here I'm standing on 2,000 years old stairway, part of the street that came up from the water gate to the top of Mount Zion. Jesus not only walked the stairway, but he was dragged on it in chains from Gethsemane to Caiaphas Palace where we are. And after his trial, along it, through the temple courts to Pintius Pilate, who probably resided at the Antonia right behind that golden dome. Traditionally, the church of St. Peter in Galiganto occupies the area where Caiaphas Palace stood. From the excavations at Mount Zion and the Jewish Quarter, remains of villas and palaces discovered gives us a vivid image on how these palaces would have looked like then. Here, the palace consisted of two floors, where at the lower floor we had the cisterns, mikvahs, storage rooms while the upper floor consisted of courtyard flanked by bedrooms, meeting hall, and balconies overlooking the temple. Here in the Gospels that Jesus was led into the inner hall, while Peter followed him. Mark 14. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the teacher of the law came to gather. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. John 18. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus because this disciple was known to the high priest. He went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple who was known to the high priest came back, spoke to the seven girls on duty there, and brought Peter in. Important for us, to imagine that Jesus is within the inner hall of the palace, separated by a door from Peter who was warming himself around the fire at the courtyard. First, we look at Jesus' interrogation as they first try to accuse him of political offense, which is also a theological one, by mentioning that he said that he could destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. These allegations did not hold well and were not sufficient to sentence him to death. At this point, a twist in the interrogation takes place when the high priest stands saying, I charge you under oath of the living God. Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus answers, I am. I am who I am. You will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. 
The striking part is that the question of the high priest directly echoes Peter's confession at Caesarea Philippi. And at that very moment, outside in the court, separated by door, Peter himself declared that he does not know him. Three times Peter denied Jesus. At the same moment, Jesus was affirming his identity publicly that he is the Messiah. The Messiah, the Son of God. The Messiah, the King of Israel. They mocked Jesus, spat on him, hit him, and seems that they held him in what we call today the dungeon till the morning before taking him to Pilate. Dungeon is a system and could well have been where Jesus was held overnight. We notice the many Byzantine crosses carved in its opening and within it showing veneration of the site by the early Christians. So they took Jesus and put him into the cistern of Caiaphas. They lowered Jesus by ropes into the cistern. It had no water in it, only mud, and Jesus sank down into the mud. Darkness, abandoned by his friends, mocked and beaten, Jesus would probably went on his knees, lifting his arms, praying to his Father, the very same words of the ancient that prophesied what Jesus was just experiencing. Morio, Allah turkon bimamu ga'ith, wablil yukud ma'ik, ta'uluk do ma'ik sluth, Warken ibn al Ba'uth. Lord, you are the God who saves me. Day and night, I cry out to you. May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. I am overwhelmed with troubles, and my life draws near to death. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am like one without strength. I am set apart with the dead. Like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, who are cut off from your care, you have put me in the lowest pit, in the darkest depths. Your wrath lies heavily on me. You have overwhelmed me with all your ways. You have taken from me my closest friends and have made me repulsive to them. I'm confined and cannot escape. 
my eyes are dim with grief. I call to you, Lord, every day. I spread out my hands to you. Do you show your wonders to the dead? Do their spirits rise up and praise you? Is your love declared in the grave? Your faithfulness in destruction? Are your wonders known in the place of darkness? Of your righteous need in the land of oblivion? But I cry to you for help, Lord. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Why, Lord, do you reject me and hide your face from me? From my youth I have suffered and been close to death. I have borne your terrors and am in despair. Your wrath has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. All day long they surround me like a flood. They have completely engulfed me. You have taken from me friend and neighbor. Darkness is my closest friend. Caiaphas said, The blood of one man for whole nation, not knowing that they have prophesied the future. The blood of Jesus for humanity, salvation.